My name is Dr. Ryan Darcy. I am uh, the head of the National Research Council's Institute for Biodiagnostics in Halifax. We work very closely with the IWK running the uh, non-invasive medical imaging laboratories. MEG stands for magnetoencephalography. MEG basically looks at uh, very small magnetic fluctuations in your brain. MEG technology is very good at looking at not only where the activity is in the brain, but also how that activity is actually unfolding in time. When it comes to looking at how the brain works, so brain function, uh, the IWK has the best technology in the world. If you're in Halifax, you, you have access to, without question, the best in surgical mapping and using these technologies to do that than you would anywhere else in the world. It came because Halifax uh, is very good at working together in partnership and has a very solid focus uh, to blur the lines and make research directly impact patient health. What makes it special here is that um, lots of cities around the world have high-tech uh, brain imaging and, and medical imaging tools. Certainly Halifax has uh, far more uh, in that it has a full set of, of tools, so it has MRI, it has MEG. That makes it compete with the best centers in the world. What makes it out-compete with the best centers is that it's managed to embed those tools uh, right in the backyard of the clinic and actually moving these advanced technologies directly into helping patients. What we have is actually a, a phenomenal partnership between Dalhousie University, IWK, Capital Health. With that you can partner with uh, the National Research Council. So you put all these very powerful organizations together and you create a focused initiative where you're trying to impact brain health. NRC's role in this is to provide the scientific and technical expertise and the instrumentation. The thing that we really love what we do is that we develop non-invasive technologies. So if you're doing surgery to treat epilepsy or brain tumors, one of the critical things that you need to know are where are the vital functional areas that you don't want to impact. So for instance, your ability to speak or memory. And a tool like this allows you to get a very high resolution map of where those uh, critical functions are so that when you go into surgery, uh, you can perform the surgery without uh, impacting those functions. Next door to us, we have uh, very high performance and, and strong uh, MRIs. These are basically the next generation. We integrate the sort of work that we do directly with uh, patient populations, uh, with the sort of work that you hear about where people are developing new cures for uh, you know, epilepsy and, and different diseases that are brain diseases. We are working with people who are developing a vaccine and a treatment for cancer. Research is really, in many ways, medicine, and medicine is research. My name is Drew Bay, and I work for the National Research Council. Basically what we're doing with right now is uh, basically mapping out some coordinates, uh, digitizing uh, your skull basically. So what we're going to do now is just uh, prepare you for starting the MEG test, which involves putting four sensors on your head. All right. Now I'm just going to trace your head. There are pen marks all over my head right there. Yeah. Yeah. Peter's having a seat. It's very comfortable. Feels like I'm on a, the beginning of a roller coaster uh, experience. We're just closing the door here. Okay. Peter, can you hear us? Okay, can you um, clench your jaw? Wow, look at that. Just uh, relax and close your eyes for a bit. So see how the waves changed? That's, that's basically showing that he's getting sleepy. You can open your eyes again. You can actually see his heartbeat in there too. Can you uh, look back and forth to the left and the right? Go to the eye field. Do you see it changing there? That's him looking back and forth. Your brain waves look good. We'll show them really basic visual flashing on a screen. We can actually use all this information to find out where in his brain that it is responsible for actually processing that information. This shows you the, the recordings that we're taking from each one of those sensors. We actually have a large number of sensors uh, around your brain, uh, 306 actually. They record incredibly small magnetic fields. These are so small that without a shield, we have a very uh, sophisticated shield, a car driving two kilometers away would swamp our sensors. And what we're actually looking at is the back of his head. This is the point at which he sees the stimulus and then this is his brain actually processing the change. And each one of these peaks is different stages of processing visual information as it goes from your eye to your brain. If your highways in your brain are, are slowing down due to multiple sclerosis, we'll actually see the slowing down in this signal. Okay, Peter, that's it. We're going to stop. We will uh, come in and get you out. You're all done. We can basically say, I want to know where this peak comes from. 
and we can find the region of the brain that actually produces this peak. For instance, you know, you have to go into surgery and the surgeon is worried that, you know, they'll get the tumor out, but in doing so, they're going to leave you with, you'll be blind. What we can do is provide them with the map of where those critical areas are. We can do that for low-level things like vision, but we can do it for really important high-level cognitive functions like language, memory, and those sorts of things as well. The team can plan using that information to make sure that the surgery goes much more smoothly. They know where those areas are. They don't have to use time to go find them. They can reduce the size of the actual opening that they need to use. It's, so it, it has an immediate impact on the, um, the, the clinical care. What I love about diagnostic imaging is it's not just one disease. You can help multiple diseases. In this case, any disease that relates to the brain, which uh, more than one third of us uh, will experience in our lifetime, you're going to be able to potentially help those cases. This technology is incredibly suited for kids. Uh, they can move, which is a problem in other technologies. It's not scary. So it's a technology that effectively allows kids to benefit from research uh, too. To create this lab, it was five point three million dollars. Uh, to run it on a yearly basis, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Initiatives like this that are funding advanced health care are absolutely critical to helping us do our jobs. You realize, and when this instrument came down, you realize just how many kids this is going to help. Please support the IWK Radiothon on C100, 1-800-595-2266. Or c100fm.com.